Good morning, everybody. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about the applications of non-destructive testing solutions for structural evaluation and condition assessment of various structural systems. Before we begin, uh, I would like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Hamed Lacey. I'm the co-founder and structural engineer at F-PrimeC Solutions. Uh, I have more than 15 years of experience in structural evaluation and condition assessment of buildings and uh, infrastructure facilities. I did my PhD at McGill University in Montreal and I'm a professional engineer in Ontario. Before we begin, I would like to briefly review uh, the main topics that uh, we are going to uh, discuss today. In the beginning, I would like to talk about the importance of non-destructive testing, why we should use more non-destructive testing solutions in our inspections and day-to-day -day business. In doing so, we have to go to the very base and answer these critical questions. Where to begin? Where, the, where and how does a proper inspection work? We will also review common challenges that exist for structural engineers all over the world. And then we will review the applications of NDT solutions in condition assessment of structural systems. I also include a few examples of Canadian experiences. Why non-destructive testing solutions? Many engineers ask us, uh, why, why NDT? Why not simply going and taking some course? And in this presentation, uh, we will discuss uh, about the importance of implementing an NDT-based uh, inspection and maintenance solutions. Non-destructive testing solutions are often provide a rapid and cost-effective scenario for inspecting these structures. They have a great uh, amount of customization, so it can be adapted to in, to different structural systems. So you can you can take uh, the same set of solutions to a building condominium building, and you can use it for a dam structure. You can use it on a uh, let's say a bridge structure. You can use it in a power plant. So this gives engineers uh, room to play with the technology and uh, use it more often. Another important aspect of NDT solutions is that they are repeatable. This is very important in uh, designing a routine inspection policy, uh, mainly because it helps uh, engineers to, uh, to look into maintenance in a long-term view. Uh, the good thing about NDT, you can test the same spot um, as many as you want, as many times as you want, so you can test it Today, you can test it in six months, you can test it in two years, in five years, and then by establishing a benchmark for each specific structure, you will be able to collect more information on how the structure or the system is aging, how deterioration mechanism is affecting its structural integrity and reliability. And entity solutions are often very cost effective. And when I'm talking about cost effective, many people think I'm talking about cheap solutions. No, that's not the case. Uh, by cost effective, I mean uh, implementing an NDT based uh, scheme in your maintenance procedure uh, will save you money down the road. So by, by knowing uh, what is happening inside your uh, structural elements uh, in advance, you have better options of uh, fixing, repairing, uh, and uh, keeping your structure in a better condition. Which one do you prefer? Non-intrusive or intrusive? Conventional structural engineering is heavy, heavily relies on intrusive testing. So when you send an engineer to the site, they, uh, they always come with a very easy solution of, yeah, let's go and take some course and take a look. 
what we are trying to discuss is that most of these uh, solutions uh, can be easily replaced with an with a non-destructive testing alternative, which is equally precise and pro can provide information about the structural details, if not uh, if not more, uh, but adequately enough uh, to do the inspection job. So imagine you are testing uh, and evaluating an existing structure that has certain defects inside. Who wants another hole in their structure? Nobody. Talk to owners and you will see how afraid they are like from taking course from their structures and their assets. And things can get worse. So imagine in your inspection, uh, you hit a rebar, you caught a rebar. So we are, we are talking about the structures that are 50, 60 year old and uh, they are already in trouble. They uh, require immediate repair and upgrade. Uh, and the last thing an owner wants is to have another problem on top of all the problem that uh, they have. So uh, this gives another good reason to switch to non-destructive testing. Moreover, uh, time to time we are uh, having, uh, we have to test uh, structural systems that uh, taking concrete cores is absolutely uh, out of the table. So we have to be prepared and we have to know uh, what NDT can offer. Where to begin? So it all starts in the details. So when we want to plan a condition assessment and a structural uh, condition evaluation, uh, we have to know uh, what we are looking for. We have to have develop a good understanding of the structural system that we are evaluating, and we have to know what we should look for. Uh, what are the objectives of this inspection? And after we know the objectives, which is normally defined by talking and talking with the owners, reviewing all scenarios, what is uh, considered risk, uh, the hazard sources, uh, and the present condition of the structure, then, then we go and plan for details. Structure condition assessment of existing buildings uh, uh, prepared by professional engineers Ontario provides a very good uh, document uh, to start uh, thinking about structural condition assessment of buildings. So it, uh, it lays out uh, the critical questions that needs to be answered in this process. And alternatively, uh, Ontario Structure Inspection Manual, or SIEM, is widely used for bridge sector, but uh, it's equally good and uh, many, many of the terminology and methodology can be used for uh, other structural systems as well. There are two documents that, uh, that are uh, very, very useful for review is the report on non-destructive test methods for evaluation of concrete structures uh, provided by committee 2282R, uh, American Concrete Institute, and the code requirements for assessment, repair, and rehabilitation of existing concrete structures developed by ACI 562 uh, committee. So these two documents uh, provide uh, testing solutions. So you can review uh, alternatives in testing and uh, you have to understand what you are looking for. And then based on these documents, you will be able to uh, design and craft a very reliable uh, condition assessment scheme, uh, which eventually brings information about the present condition of the structure and uh, how to uh, come up with a very useful and meaningful repair scheme. When structural evaluation is needed, uh, there are certain questions that needs to be answered. As a structural engineers, we always have questions, uh, questions about the strength of material, the properties of material, how uh, characterization of material would affect our analysis, our modeling, how many reinforcement bars uh, is laying uh, over this particular piece of slab, how many bars do we have in this piece of column, uh, where do uh, steel lattice splices end, for example, when we are trying to evaluate the plastic hinge area? Uh, when, uh, when, like, uh, when and how closely uh, transverse reinforcement are uh, placed? Uh, this is also, again, very important in seismic evaluation. Uh, so these are questions that, uh, that are 
uh, easily can be addressed through non-destructive testing. And uh, these NDT solutions can provide a very rapid and uh, cost-effective solution for uh, collecting uh, critical information. So information about a strength, uh, when they are called into question, uh, NDT can provide information. Another aspect that needs to be addressed is uh, when a structural engineer is dealing with uh, insufficient information about an existing structure. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were like testing, uh, testing a foundation, for example. Uh, no records available uh, built uh, some 50, 60 years ago. Uh, no drafts, no construction records. Uh, and then uh, engineers are facing a mountain to climb. Uh, you have to make uh, certain assumptions that uh, make sense. And uh, in order to uh, make these assumptions more reliable and more uh, reasonable, you need uh, extra piece of information. And in the absence of like uh, uh, construction records, uh, NDT can provide uh, those set of information uh, for engineers. When testing concrete structures, there are certain challenges that uh, excite and uh, <laughs> excite engineers. So these are like our uh, problematics that we want to know, we want to understand. In concrete, uh, the paramount is the concrete strength. So everybody is so obsessed with concrete strength, uh, F prime C. Uh, they want to know what is the strength of concrete. If the concrete strength is good, everybody is happy and if it is not good then everybody is in big trouble so we want to know if non-destructive testing solutions can provide information about the strength of concrete another big aspect is the chloride content in the case of bridge structures and the visual examination of concrete cores so these can be helpful in uh, characterization of material that is used equally uh, important is uh, the performance and the mechanical properties of steel reinforcement. Uh, but for those like uh, steel taking uh, samples uh, uh, seems to be uh, more reliable. Then engineers are also very interested in uh, providing a very comprehensive map of structural details. Uh, that, that is uh, concrete thickness, for example, cover thickness. Uh, that, uh, or the overall thickness of concrete element itself. Let's say we are evaluating a bridge abutment. We only have access from one side. So this is one of the very interesting questions that non-disruptive testing solutions can, work, can come up with uh, very important uh, answers for it. Rebar spacing. Let's imagine we are testing a bridge structure that we don't have any idea about uh, the, the existing reinforcement pattern. NDT solutions can help us collect those set of information. The other set of uh, challenges that we have is uh, different types of uh, defects uh, that exist in concrete structures. Uh, defects can, uh, can be present in uh, several shapes. Uh, we can have voids uh, due to poor uh, workmanship, poor construction methods. We can have like cracks develop for so many different reasons. So we can have settlements, we can have aging, we can have like a thermal uh, plastic shrinkage. Uh, cracking can, can, can happen as a structural overloading. So these are uh, types of defects that, uh, that are point of concern for many structural engineers. Then for example, in the case of bridge structures, we have delamination, uh, which is uh, often uh, problem number one. We want to know uh, how the bridge deck uh, is uh, at the present. And uh, is it possible to collect information through non-destructive testing or not? Another important question with regards to concrete structure is durability performance of concrete structures. Concrete uh, is a very good material, uh, but over time uh, it, it can show like signs of uh, distress and uh, defects. Uh, corrosion is problem number one in terms of uh, durability issues uh, that concrete structures can face. Uh, bridge decks, for example, are very vulnerable to corrosion. Parking garages in Canada, where we use uh, lots of de-icing salt to, to keep uh, uh, things moving uh, during the winter, uh, 
those are critical and uh, entity solutions can provide inform important information in this aspect. Now, going into questions one by one, uh, let's review uh, the most important parameter in concrete structures, uh, concrete strength. Do we really need to take course or is there an alternative? So I'm often asked by engineering community uh, that non-destructive testing solutions that we, we use and utilize for predicting uh, the, the strength of concrete, how reliable is that? Uh, should we take course at all or not? And the answer is neither yes and neither no. So it's a mix of the two. So we can eliminate uh, most of the corings uh, but we still need some course. That is the best type of answer to such a question. How does it work? Concrete strength is uh, by far the most important parameter in concrete. Uh, we, we, there are a set of uh, procedures uh, designed by different codes like uh, ACI 214, uh, 4R and CSA 23.2 provide guidelines for obtaining a good uh, concrete core sample and how to interpret the compressive strength results. So unlike uh, the very easy nature of taking cores, uh, handling concrete cores, uh, proper uh, moving from site to, to the lab, keeping the moisture consistent and testing, preparing the test surfaces. These are the critical questions that needs to be answered. And if we do not pay uh, enough attention to details, then the, these details are going to haunt us. So the, the quality of concrete strength that is evaluated through intrusive uh, coring and testing for compression in a uh, compression test machine is only as good as uh, how we are handling this uh, entire procedure uh, from taking cord, moving it to the lab and preparing in the lab and collecting the results. But can we replace concrete strength for uh, testing uh, with in-place methods to evaluate concrete strength? Is there any way to use non-destructive testing? And if there is, how reliable they are? So uh, codes like uh, CSA uh, design code, concrete design code, they don't allow any any of like NDT, uh, entities to, to be used. But but we, we face certain conditions, certain scenarios that uh, taking cores is absolutely out of, out of the table. So we really have to come up with alternative solutions that are equally good, or at least can provide uh, like a, a degree of uh, uh, confidence in uh, and knowing the range of concrete strength at least. Many, Many testing procedures have, de have been developed over the past uh, few decades. Uh, most importantly and uh, uh, easy, uh, the most convenient and the uh, most easy uh, method uh, to, to use, easiest method to use is the rebound hammer. Rebound hammer uh, developed like some 60, 70 years ago uh, is a great tool for assessing the uniformity of concrete. With the recent developments in uh, developing these hammers, uh, they are now very good in uh, evaluating for co comparative analysis of surface hardness in concrete, and they can uh, equally be used to evaluate to obtain a very reliable uh, estimate of concrete strength. In doing so, engineers should also uh, pay attention to details because traditionally we believe like uh, we can easily convert the values from the hammers uh, directly into strength values. Uh, more studies by researchers around the world has shown that this is not the case. But there is a certain procedure that if you follow, you will be able to use the results in a uh, rebound hammer uh, to accurately predict the strength of concrete in place. In the article below that I have put the link uh, here, uh, you, can, you can learn how by taking a few number of cores from uh, every specific project and then developing a case specific benchmark, you will be able to test large areas of concrete and use your own benchmark to evaluate the concrete strength across a very large area in a very short time and reduce the number of aggressive intrusive coring to a very minimum. 
Another important test is ultrasonic pulse velocity. Ultrasonic pulse velocity uh, is a uh, is a, like a deviation of uh, ultrasonic testing, uh, which is like widely used for evaluation of metals. Uh, but with a few tweaks and changes, uh, it, it can be also used for assessing quality and homogeneity of concrete materials. In evaluating uh, concrete depth and uh, in-place concrete strength, ultrasonic pulse velocity can also be useful. The procedure is called a combined method. Uh, a sound rep method. This is a very popular method in evaluating in, for in-place methods of estimating concrete strength. So how, how the method works is actually collecting the information from uh, the two tests, two sets of tests, rebound hammer test and ultrasonic pulse velocity, combining them together to uh, estimate the strength of concrete. And how it works is actually uh, you uh, use different types of functions, mathematical models uh, developed by uh, Esparic, uh, Braze, and many other researchers around the globe. Uh, different formulas have been uh, developed over the past few years to accurately uh, model the strength of concrete. Uh, these models basically take into account uh, the uh, rebound hammer uh, number and ultrasonic pulse velocity. They take it into uh, mathematical function uh, and uh, it is designed to basically wherever uh, rebound hammer values are not reliable ultrasonic comes to the rescue and vice versa by this method so you can you can have an option to collect information about the strength of concrete where it is needed most Structural detailing is another important aspect that requires attention. Let's say we are facing a bridge abutment. Let's say we are facing a structural element that we only have access from one side. Let's say we are testing a slab on grade. Uh, there are certain parameters that we don't know and we, 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 we are very interested to know. Uh, concrete thickness is number one. In, for example, a retaining wall, when we don't have access to the other side, we want to see if this is a 30 centimeter wall, if this is 60 centimeter, and these are going to be uh, very uh, critical in our decision making and in our numerical models that we are building. Another important aspect is evaluating uh, concrete cover thickness. Uh, this is important when we are dealing with durability modeling, uh, when we are trying to uh, see if these structures are going to survive uh, their life cycle and even beyond. Another important aspect is structural reinforcement, their spacing, their pattern, uh, and uh, this is very important, especially when we are testing a certain certain concrete, uh, certain structural elements. Let's say we are testing uh, concrete shear walls. Uh, we are testing uh, piers. We want to know if uh, these uh, columns are, uh, they do have adequate transverse reinforcement. Uh, and if they do have, what is the spacing between those reinforcements? So these are questions that you don't need to go and uh, cut concrete uh, to get answer for it. You can easily use non-destructive testing solutions to collect information about these parameters. Concrete defects. So uh, the common practice is that we go, we take cores, we remove concrete like uh, 30 by 30 centimeter from the bridge deck. We uh make defects uh, in asphalt layer and then we remove concrete and yeah let's uh, take a quick look in the concrete itself and yeah we see the delamination here but the main question to answer is that can we do this any better and the answer is yes with the advancements that uh, happened over the past few years in the uh, ndt uh, we now have tools uh, that are uh, equally good in collecting information about those set of defects and they can uh, they can do this without making any harm to the structure. Another important question is uh, concrete cracks. So I used to have a professor who always said like concrete is born with cracks and uh, that's quite correct but uh, not all cracks are equal. 
they are not born equal. So some cracks are like just there from day one and some cracks are developed as a, as a sign of distress, like when you have corrosion, when you have uneven settlement in foundation, you need to have uh, tools that help you collect information about the condition of these cracks. Are these cracks any threat to structural integrity? Are these cracks any threat to uh, durability performance of this structure or not? And the answer to this question can actually help engineers in many cases. So the photo that you see, it's from a concrete slab that uh, we, we did testing uh, a few years ago. And uh, the, the point of concern was like, is this crack some sort of like surface crack? Is it just a few, two, three centimeter? Or this is a true thickness crack? Answer to this question actually is going to help uh, structural engineers involved in the practice of uh, designing and uh, uh, rehabilitating this structure in the future. And this is very important. It changes the repair solutions that you have. It changes the rehabilitation scheme that you want to propose to your client. And uh, absolutely NDT can provide uh, information for you. And what would happen if the owner says this is a this, this is considered the historic site for any reason? Uh, this is a nuclear plant. This is part of a let, let's say a dam structure, and uh, your option of like uh, taking concrete cores uh, is really not a very good solution for your owner. So. In these scenarios, non-destructive testing can provide an excellent alternative. A great non-destructive testing tool for evaluating uh, thin concrete slabs is the Impact Echo. Impact Echo can provide engineers with uh, important information about uh, the presence of delamination and voids inside concrete slabs. It can help evaluate if uh, there is any debonding in between layers. If uh, if you have multi-layer uh, type of uh, slab, it's again, uh, Impact Echo provides a very good solution uh, for testing. Impact Echo and its variations uh, like, uh, uh, like the test for use for deep foundations, uh, pile integrity testing uh, are, are equally important in the uh, testing of new structures and existing structures. For example, pile integrity testing uh, in the case of deep foundations can either be used for as a quality control tool for new foundations, or it can be used uh, as a, a forensic method for evaluating the depth of existing foundations. So uh, this is a this is a very uh, interesting topic. Another, another alternative to impact echo is another variation of the test uh, as uh, referred to as uh, impulse response. Impulse response provides a great tool for evaluating the condition of concrete, uh, concrete uh, and concrete slabs on grade. Let's say you have a slab on grade and you have certain voids underneath. Over time, uh, the groundwater movement uh, washes out the soil underneath this slab. You want to know if this concrete slab is sitting uh, under uh, over a very uh, reliable and solid uh, piece of soil or all hollow and void. Uh, impulse response technique is a great tool and another variation of impact echo that can help engineers in the condition assessment of these facilities. Ultrasonic pulse velocity, as mentioned earlier, is a great tool for uh, evaluating homogeneity of concrete. But a very specific configuration of the test can enable engineers to evaluate the depth and uh, the depth of uh, existing cracks. So uh, in the image you see, uh, we, uh, we observe a very uh, wide crack, two to three millimeter on a concrete hoist uh, structure. So this is a, like, a, 100 meter uh, concrete wall uh, holding, a, holding a hoist for a mine in, in Sudbury, Ontario. Uh, 60 centimeter thick uh, concrete wall 
And uh, the objective was to see if the cracks that are uh, visible on both surfaces of a uh, concrete wall uh, are penetrating through or not. And uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity can actually address these type of questions, how deep these cracks penetrate into concrete. Another important aspect uh, is uh, concrete imaging and scanning. Uh, concrete imaging and scanning tools have developed uh, over the past decade. Uh, lots of uh, mathematical uh, developments uh, in terms of like solving the equations, uh, processing power, uh, the rise of tablets. Uh, these, uh, these has actually helped uh, for a new generation of processing tools that can help engineers on and off the field for evaluating concrete structures. Concrete imaging and scanning can be as easy as a ground penetrating radar, which is widely used by all of those people who are mainly involved in cutting and coring business. So uh, you see uh, that uh, a non-destructive testing solution uh, can equally help uh, people in both fronts. So, uh, with the help of ground penetrating radar, we are now able to develop very precise maps of uh, rebar distribution and spacing in our concrete elements. We might be able to detect some major voids uh, inside our concrete elements. And uh, this, uh, this uh, tool helps avoid cutting rebar in scenarios where we want mm -hmm. to take uh, concrete cores. And uh, if you want to go a little bit deeper, like uh, another like a set of GPR mainly developed for geophysics and uh, geotechnical investigations, you can you can equally use it to to identify uh, the location and the uh, shape of uh, unknown existing foundations. So GPR and its variations uh, can can help engineers in evaluating uh, unknown foundations as well. Ultrasonic tomography or, uh, is, a, is a great tool for uh, detecting voids and delaminations in concrete elements. So uh, the technique has improved a lot over the last decade. So initially we, we were able to uh, use some uh, thickness gauges only, uh, like a pulse echo technique uh, that, that was used to evaluate the thickness of concrete elements. Now, with the uh, improvements in uh, mathematical modeling and, and uh, use the post-processing of the data collected, uh, we are now able to uh, identify events that exist inside the concrete element. Let's say we are dealing with uh, a concrete inspection uh, where we want to identify the location of voids. We want to identify the location of tendons. Uh, we want to see uh, if there is any major defect in subsurface of concrete, ultrasonic tomography provides an excellent tool uh, to collect this set of information. So I'm closing, uh, getting closer to, to the end of this presentation. Uh, I would like to talk uh, about uh, another important aspect uh, in uh, concrete, uh, concrete uh, inspection, corrosion. Corrosion is the uh, enemy number one for many concrete ex structures that are exposed to chloride or uh, de-icing agents. Uh, bridge structure across Canada, for example, in North America, parking garages. These are structures that are uh, heavily uh, disturbed by presence of chloride. Uh, so are there any solutions that we can use? And the answer is yes. So uh, every inspection, every repair project uh, that uh, involves like uh, that, that in the context of corrosion, uh, we can use a half cell corrosion potential mapping. Uh, so the test uh, provides information about the uh, likelihood of having active corrosion. So if engineers want to design a repair scheme, uh, this is absolutely a great tool to identify areas that require immediate attention and uh, how, how these scenarios can actually 
uh, how how this uh, test can actually help engineers uh, limit the uh, surface that requires repairing and uh, rehabilitation. Another great tool in this category will be uh, will be corrosion rate measurements. So if uh, if you ever like uh, uh, interested to collect information about the kinetics of uh, uh, corrosion activity, then uh, corrosion rate measurements uh, are absolutely necessary to, to provide information about how fast corrosion uh, is happening. So together with half cell potential, corrosion potential mapping, they provide information about uh, the state and the future, current state and the future. Half cell corrosion potential mapping is widely used in bridge deck condition surveys. So the method uh, is uh, provides a great tool because uh, for large surface areas. So when when we have uh, long bridges and we want to test, uh, then half cell is a great tool to uh, identify areas of the deck that require uh, immediate uh, attention. So by this, uh, by this, I'm uh, collecting. Uh, I'm finishing the first set of uh, slides that I have in this presentation. Uh, I would like to ask uh, all attendees if they have any questions uh, and uh, interested in any any of these slides. Uh, just share it with me. Uh, together with me today is uh, Dr. Vahid Shah Savari, who is. Uh, helping me uh, with this uh, with this presentation and uh, we will uh, be very help, uh, happy to help with any questions that you you might have so feel free to post your questions and uh, I would like to for the remainder of the session I would like to talk about a few of our examples that uh, that we have done over the past few years uh, just to show uh, the importance uh, of uh, non-destructive testing solutions. We, we often talk to customers who are like interested to, to measure certain parameters of concrete, let's say concrete thickness uh, or uh, voids or defects inside concrete. Is it only coring that can be used or there is any entity solution that can equally be useful? And the answer is that Non-destructive testing can provide excellent uh, data uh, on the quality uh, of concrete, uh, can provide very precise information about the thickness of concrete elements. In many cases, uh, when uh, concrete is uh, uh, sitting next to soil, uh, we, we, we can actually collect uh, very precise information about, uh, about thickness. Uh, we can collect information about uh, voids and defects inside. And uh, these solutions can actually help us uh, come with a set of like uh, uh, NDT game, I would call it. Uh, so what can we? What else can we do? Uh, one of the uh, one of the tests uh, that that is very interesting is like uh, tomography or pulse echo. Uh, these these techniques uh, can 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 be used to study the quality of concrete on or around cold joint areas. So cold joints has uh, has been a problem in construction sector. Uh, every time uh, two layers of concrete are uh, joined together uh, and there is a delay due to uh, construction uh, sequences, uh, we might face. Uh, cold joints that are uh, pro problematic. So in the, the case that you are seeing here, uh, it's a cold joint uh, in a very critical uh, concrete structure in, uh, in uh, Bowmanville, uh, Ontario. So uh, one of the interesting questions is uh, if uh, the sign of the apparent cold joint that we see on the surface, is it, is it really true a true thickness problem or is it just something uh, very uh, minor and limited to, to the surface? And uh, non-destructive testing solution like uh, ultrasonic tomography, uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity, pulse echo uh, are uh, capable of providing critical information about uh, this set of problems.
So I have received a very uh, interesting question uh, that does, uh, uh, does uh, ACI standard allow to uh, estimate concrete strength with uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity? Uh, the answer is like ACI uh, 318, uh, no, uh, as far as I know, uh, still uh, we are heavily relying on uh, concrete core compressive strength uh, uh, for, for those set of uh, inspections. Uh, but uh, this is only North America. Moving beyond North America, we see like uh, codes are really adapting NDT. Uh, Sunrep is, uh, is uh, becoming a very a reliable method uh, up to 90-95% accuracy when when you supplement it with a minimal number of coring. Uh, let's say when, when we are talking about uh, Sunrep method, uh, uh, we, we can easily improve the resolution and uh, precision of results up to 90% of values, uh, which is equally good. Like uh, the confidence uh, that we uh, have developed over years in core results is, is basically kind of a convention. We have all agreed on uh, using the strength of concrete cylinder uh, as a benchmark for evaluating. We can equally use uh, NDT solutions as an alternative to do this set of tests. And uh, there is also another question. If I will share a PDF of this presentation, yes, uh, feel free to email to me at uh, hamed at fprimec.com. Uh, I'll be happy to, to do it. And uh, if this presentation tends to be a good one, I'll, I'll share it on uh, YouTube so you can, you can watch it at a later time at your convenience. So, an interesting question is, are pulse echo and uh, impact echo methods are, uh, are the same? Uh, no, they, uh, they, are, they are not the same. Uh, <laughs> in, uh, in impact echo, you are using a handheld like impactor to excite the environment. So when, when you are using different types of impactor, you are, uh, the contact time between your impactor and concrete surface is going to vary. Uh, this variation uh, leads to uh results in uh different sets of frequencies uh that uh, create uh inside the inside the concrete so this should be selected based on the uh, concrete thickness that you are evaluating so if you are testing a concrete thickness like a shallow thickness a higher frequency is needed when you are going deep like in the case of uh pile integrity where you are testing 30, 40 meters deep concrete components, then you have to go with a lower frequency. The same concept applies to uh, all concrete elements that lie in between. In pulse echo technique, it's different. Uh, the frequency is, uh, is specific. So a specific frequency of shear waves are passing through concrete and then uh, you will be able to, uh, to collect uh, the information and do the analysis. So, uh, they are different in terms of their nature and uh, interpretation of test results. I am going through the questions to see. Okay, uh, this this uh, this uh, sounds to be a very uh, exciting question. Uh, what would you use for concrete thickness estimation, uh, or uh, is it a GPR ultrasonic pulse echo? Uh, so the answer is like uh, we always have to uh, develop a very reasonable uh, expectation. Expectation first. Okay, so we have to know what we are testing. If we don't know what we are testing, then uh, I think a multi-technology approach uh, is the most reliable solution. But if we know what we are testing, let's say if we know we are testing a concrete wall that is going to be less than half a meter, uh, then at least we have one piece of information in, at, at our disposal. Uh, we can uh, build on uh, this piece of information and go with the solution. Now with GPR, uh, the, the question is, uh, what frequency range uh, antenna are we using? If you use a high frequency antenna, uh, you will be able to develop a high resolution uh, image of shallow depths, uh, but as you go deeper, you lose, uh, you lose uh, resolution. 
Now, there are certain developments in GPR technology over the past uh, two years. Uh, there are uh, new players in the market and uh, uh, we have to fact check like uh, how reliable they are in terms of evaluating uh, uh, deep concrete components. Uh, but the general assumption is that ultrasonic pulse echo uh, is very good uh, for concrete up to 40, 45 centimeter. Uh, if we use ultrasonic tomography, uh, we can go up to one meter and uh, some uh, technologies can, can provide resolution up to two meters. Uh, these numbers uh, heavily rely on, uh, on uh, what type of reinforcement uh, is underneath. So if, uh, if the equipment, if the concrete component is heavily reinforced, uh, then we always have to consider that uh, uh, our depth of penetration uh, will be uh, much less. Uh, for GPR, uh, I've been able to test concrete, uh, concrete uh, up to uh, 40, 50 uh, centimeter. Uh, but the question in the GPR is what is, uh, what is at the other end of concrete uh, element? So if you have uh, water, if you have like, if you have air, uh, I would say you might, uh, you might get a chance of like uh, seeing the back end of the concrete component. If you have soil or if you have uh, bedrock, uh, I would say GPR will be a very tough, uh, tough test to implement in, in, in such cases. An interesting question regarding uh, testing of piles. Uh, testing of piles, uh, piles are deep elements. Uh, when, when you're using a low frequency sensor, uh, acceleration sensor, you can easily uh, test up to 80, 90 meters. Uh, the problem with pile integrity testing uh, is, however, is not the fact that you cannot test, you can always test, uh, but the deeper the element is, uh, the chance of collecting a reflection from the pile toe uh, becomes uh, less and less. So you have to use some mathematical uh, formula uh, like exponential amplification functions to, uh, to visually enhance the signal uh, that is arriving uh, at the top of the pipe. Now, this has a drawback as well. So the drawback is that when, when you are uh, amplifying the signal that is traveling back uh, from the pile toe, you are also amplifying uh, the, uh, the void, uh, the, the noise uh, that you have in your system. And uh, when, when you have a very deep uh, foundation, uh, the problem is that uh, you also have a very high skin friction because uh, those uh, area, perimeter area, uh, multiplied by the overall length of the pile, that, that is going to work against you and it will uh, reduce the resolution of test results. Ask for a cold joint to start in uh, cold joints. Uh, let me see if I do have a, if I do have one here. So the, the image that you see here is actually a cold joint. So it, it, uh, you, you can't see a crack here, uh, but uh, visibly this is the uh, boundary between the two layers uh, of uh, concrete. Uh, so uh, in this scenario, there was about like uh, two hours of delay between uh, between the old batch and the new batch, and uh, uh, apparently the first layer of concrete has already set. Uh, so the concrete, but but uh, there are agents that you can use uh, when bounding two layers of like uh, concrete while they are still in plastic condition, and that can actually help uh, help a lot to avoid such problems. Diameter of a bar, uh, Agena. So that that's another good question. Uh, so uh, the issue with uh, the issue with uh, diameter of the bar is like uh, it, it, it's it's using a uh, like a type of uh, electromagnetic technique to uh, to identify this parameter. Now, when answering to this question, we have to identify we have two unknowns here. One is the depth of the rebar, which is the cover thickness. 
and one is the size of rebar. Uh, at this time, there is uh, the only method that can uh, precisely uh, give you the thickness of the rebar is X-ray. Uh, but X-ray comes with its own drawbacks, uh, which is like you have to provide an isolated area. You have to remove uh, humans from, from the site when, when you are performing a test. Uh, so most of X-ray tests uh, can only be done uh, overnight uh, and uh, you have to get like certain permissions to to do x-ray other than that if you want to use ultrasonic tomography uh, or if you want to use gpr then uh, unfortunately you are going to lose a little bit of uh, resolution so you are never really going to to comment and if this is a uh, bar uh, m15 or m20 or m25 now electromagnetic techniques can actually help you collect some information about that, but the only answer is that if you really uh, know one of the parameters, then uh, you will be able to identify the other one uh, to some extent. But you always have to leave some room for assumption and as always advice to, to go uh, on the conservative side of things. So uh, and the question that what is the challenging faces the uh, in the NDT to be approved by different authorities? I think more structural engineers need to come up forward and uh, try to uh, utilize non-destructive testing solutions in their day-to-day -day business. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are uh, there are certain uh, scientific procedures that if we follow. Uh, we are going to get the same results. So it's not going to be uh, as a concrete course for sure, but uh, one step at a time, uh, I think we will be able to improve things. Uh, recent updates in the non-destructive testing document by ACI, I think uh, uh, we are now very well positioned to, uh, to come up with solutions that a uh, structural community uh, can accept in the years to come. Moreover, in uh, countries where uh, non-destructive testing is more leading, like in Europe, in East Asia, uh, we are seeing uh, most of these uh, testing solutions has already been uh, implemented in the codes, and we uh, we somehow need to uh, take their lead and follow them. Uh, over time, we will be able to develop our own benchmark and case studies. I think case studies is an, an important solution right now because uh, because of the limitations and privacy information with the clients. Many people do not share, uh, including myself, uh, information of clients. But if by any chance uh, owners uh, agree to disclose some of this information, uh, provide like uh, scientific pa papers, technical papers, then we are going to pave the way for next generation of engineers that are capable of implementing NDT in their inspection. Is there any circumstances that NDT cannot be done? <laughs> Absolutely, uh, like uh, like any any other test, uh, non-destructive testing methods have their own limitations. Uh, for example, you cannot uh, you cannot do GPR when when you are testing a moist or wet concrete. So uh, it's not that you cannot. Uh, it's that like the resolution of your results will be affected by the presence of such uh, such parameters. Uh, another important aspect is to, to know the limitations of the tests that you are using. So ultrasonic tests, uh, people often think of it as, a, as it can do magic. It's not like that. It has a science behind the technology. So if you understand the science behind the technology, then you can actually implement it uh, in, in your practice. Uh, looking to for more questions here. So 
A question is, uh, is there any NDT method to determine chloride content inside concrete? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, not at the moment. Uh, I, I have uh, I, I've been informed that like uh, in, engineers are working on embedded sensors that can actually uh, measure the chloride content on a real time basis. Uh, but uh, as, uh, as we are having this presentation right here, right now, uh, there is no NDT solution that directly can provide you with chloride content. However, uh, there are indirect methods to, to collect information about quality of concrete. So the main question is, why do we need chloride content? We need chloride content to come up with an idea about existing condition of the concrete. So we want to know if the delamination that we are seeing, if the corrosion sign that we are seeing is caused by chloride or not. This has a very important uh, impact on, on the selection of repair uh, methods and repair tools that we are going to propose to our customers. So uh, for that, uh, still we really need to take a course, take the concrete samples uh, from uh, slabs or like walls, whatever the structural component is, and test it uh, using our conventional test methods. But indirectly, if we are interested to collect information about permeability of concrete, uh, then uh, NDT methods such as surface electrical resistivity uh, can, can equally be used and they provide absolutely great information about durability performance of concrete. Okay, the question is, uh, how will you decide? And I think this is going to be uh, the last question uh, for this presentation. I'll remain online though, if you have any question or if you want to stay a, a little bit longer, but uh, uh, which one is more reliable, ultrasonic pulse velocity or rebound hammer? Uh, this is a comparison of oranges uh, and apples. So this is, uh, I think we really have to uh, see what we are really looking for. If uh, if we are looking for, uh, if we are looking for, uh, for example, uh, only surface properties, then a rebound hammer can uh, provide some information about concrete. If we are looking for uh, a little bit deeper, we want to know about information about homogeneity of concrete, then ultrasonic pulse velocity uh, is better. And doing the two of them together is absolutely much better than doing any of them alone. Yes, so uh, Ali, uh, sonic uh, cross hole sonic logging, as you mentioned, uh, it, this is absolutely uh, more effective testing. Uh, so in this in this presentation, I really wanted to keep it very uh, very uh, focused on uh, structural evaluation. I didn't want to uh, focus on foundations. Uh, I'll I'll arrange for another webinar, which is more focused towards your technical engineering application side of things. And I will inform you uh, participants about this upcoming webinar uh, in the next few weeks. And uh, I look forward to meeting you all there. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, contact me. Uh, you have my contact information, Hamed, H-A-M-E-D, uh, at fprimec.com. Uh, and uh, I would always be happy to assist you with your questions and inquiries. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, by this, uh, I'm going to conclude uh, today's webinar. I hope uh, uh, this uh, has been a, a good introduction into applications of non-destructive testing uh, solutions for structural condition assessment, provide you with some basic ideas about uh, the capabilities of uh, NDT solutions in the structural uh, evaluation. Uh, feel free to join me on my next webinar. Uh, I'll inform you about the date and uh, wishing you all uh, the best of luck. And uh, hopefully this webinar will be available soon uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, you can access. Uh, take care and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.